My name is Pat McEntee, and I'm a new ambassador for the Chris Klug Foundation. Um, I'm a heart transplant recipient in 2017. Um, how I came to need that heart transplant, when I was in my early 20s, I was diagnosed with a pair of congenital heart defects. One was hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, and the other was Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. At the time, I was told that I was one of seven people in the world that had that combination. Uh, so I always said that I was unique, and I guess that proves it. Um, but as time went on, you know, I, you know, I was treated for uh, with an ablation for that uh, the, for the Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, um, which is an extra electrical valve in the heart. Um, and I went on to being a normal person in their early twenties, feeling like I was invincible. Um, and for about almost 10 years, that was the case. I, I didn't have any more complications. I wasn't on any medications, nothing. I was just living life like a normal person in their twenties. Uh, but then in my early thirties, I had a stroke um, at the age of 31 and, uh, and then another stroke about six months later. And so it was clear that, you know, maybe uh, some of my heart defects, some of the heart condition problems were starting to catch up with me. Uh, I was treated for those. Fortunately, there were no lingering side effects uh, or, or minimal lingering side effects from those strokes. Uh, and more or less got back to uh, a normal life, was able to work and everything. But I, uh, I continued on. And just as time went on, it was clear that I was continuing to um, slide downhill. I always say that, you know, my heart disease was sort of like a snowball at the top of a, a, of a mountain. And at first it starts rolling down really slowly. But as it goes, it sort of you know, gets bigger and picks up momentum. And that's sort of how things work. So um, fast forward to uh, really uh, just before my 40th birthday, I found myself um, really starting to to not be able to do some of the things that I used to be able to do. You know, I, I was I was finding myself um, having to catch my breath more often. And that eventually, um, you know, led me to trying to really, you know, figure out, well, was my diagnosis correct? Um, you know, so they threw a battery test at me and found, you know, basically that it was what it was. I was originally diagnosed. It just wasn't the normal uh, way that it presents itself. And again, I always said I was unique. So I think that, again, proves it. Um, but then, you know, as I as I got almost to my 40th birthday, um, you know, I was really getting winded just even walking across a room. Um, and and I developed what, you know, if, if you know anybody who's had heart failure, I developed this kind of dry cough where I was always, you know, just this light little cough, um, which, you know, I found out around this time that that's a symptom of heart failure. So, um, that led me to be sent to be evaluated for a heart transplant. I ended up at the Cleveland Clinic for that. Um, and I had the the first part of the evaluation before my just before my 40th birthday and the second part just after my 40th birthday. And in between, I took a great trip um, up to um, catch my last two baseball parks. Uh, I've been to all 30 major league stadiums. I went to Yankee Stadium and Toronto. Um, and I walked the length of Niagara Falls and and what I found out soon after to be end stage heart failure and, um, you know, taking lots of uh, breaks to take pictures, you know, look, oh, look at this beautiful, it's Niagara Falls. Wow, let's take a picture here. And really it was just helping me catch my breath. Um, anyway, uh, you know, I, I got back from that trip, went to my the second part of my evaluation. And again, in my mind, I'm, you know, I'm, going to this evaluation. I'm going home. I'm going to work the next Monday. Um, but by the end of my evaluation, they they did a uh, right, right heart catheterization to, um, to, you know, that was really the best test to see how my heart function was. 
and they found out that I was way sicker than I was presenting. You know, I basically, I, you know, all this walking that I was doing was not really good. Um, you know, I kind of put myself in danger. So they ended up admitting me to the hospital. And before the end of the weekend, they told me, don't get out of bed, not even go to the bathroom. Like I was that close to crashing. And, um, and then they told, you know, on, uh, on that Monday, they told me, you know, you're going to be, you're going to have your case heard for being listed on the transplant list tomorrow. Um, if you don't get a, a heart, you know, if, if once you're listed, which I was unanimously approved to be listed. And they said, if at, at that point, they said, if you don't get a heart in the next two days, you're getting an LVAD, a left ventricular assist device, which, um, you know, hearts, hearts aren't really readily available usually for in two days. So I did get the LVAD and that LVAD kept me alive for really for three years while I waited for my transplant. Um, it did, it did increase my, um, uh, my function. You know, I was, I was in a lot better condition, um, uh, not great, but, but a lot better than I had been. Um, and then I, you know, just during that, those three years waiting, um, you know, I, I did have a, a slightly better quality of life than I had. And, you know, I really kept a good attitude. Um, I had a lot of support, which, you know, without, support you you just can't get through that sort of thing um and so during those three years waiting you know i i was in relatively good condition my attitude was is when um you know other people were in far dire straits than i was at the time and you know they would get their hearts when they needed them and when my time came uh you know when i needed most that I believe that my heart also would come, and that turned out to be the case. So in um, in 2017, in, in July of 2017, I had a, a stroke that was actually caused by this uh, left ventricular assist device or LVAD, and you know, fortunately, it was not uh, debilitating, and I was able to recover from the deficits from that stroke fairly quickly. Uh, almost, but almost in time before I actually got the call for my transplant, I, I had actually gone to my first um, round of uh, physical therapy after my stroke, um, and got the call the ne that night. Actually, at at literally the, the stroke of midnight, not not to be, um, you know, had a stroke and then got the call at the stroke of midnight. Um, call it a stroke of luck, if you will. <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, so I did get the call and, and really, you know, throughout the three years I had people waiting, you know, they were more anxious for me to get my heart than I was, it seemed at times, um, especially my dad, you know, he would always call me, oh, have you heard anything? I said, no, dad, if I would have heard something, I would be there. <laughs> that's, that's kind of how it goes with transplant. They, they call you and you have to, to get there. I, I was actually surprised that they gave me seven hours to get there and not uh, for, um, but, but they were still doing some testing on, on my donor. Um, so it, it took that, you know, they, they just wanted me there to be ready in case it was a go and it did end up turning, turning out to be a go. Um, but, you know, some people say, well, you waited three years, like how difficult was that? And I, I would say it was difficult, but, um, I was able to manage a, because I had a lot of support, but also, you know, I, I took the attitude that, you know, somebody, somebody has to pass away in order for me to be saved. And, you know, so every day that I was waiting during those three years, um, that meant another day that my donor got to be with his family. Um, well, I, I say his or her family, because you don't really know who your donor is going to be. But I've since found out that my donor um, was a man. Um, and um, I've been in contact with his family. I actually got to meet his family a year ago, um, uh, actually almost a year ago to the day I got to meet, uh, his, his family. Um, it was, it was sort of extra difficult because my, um, it, it happened to be father's day, the day that we met. Um, and my donor did have, uh, he has, he had four sons. One of them was at our meeting. So I got to meet, um, 
his son. I got to meet his grandmother. I got to meet his uh, his mom and two of his siblings. Uh, it was it was a really great uh, experience to finally be able to meet them. I, you know, I'd been in contact with them um, really almost from about maybe four or five months after my transplant. Um, I'd been in contact with him, but uh, my donor is from Wisconsin. I'm in Ohio, so that's not really, you know, right down the road. Um, so we, you know, we kept in contact, but not in person. But then we finally were able to to get it together to to meet in person. So that was uh, really enjoyable um, to to get the chance to go up and and meet his family and, and thank them in person uh, for the gift that they they gave me. Uh, and my family, uh, it, it's just, you know, it, it, it's still difficult to think, you know, hey, this person had to die, but but to at least have the opportunity to to say thank you in person um, was really special um, to have that opportunity. So, um, but ever since my transplant, I, you know, I, I've had no no major complications. Uh, I've been very fortunate. I know not everybody who's who goes through a transplant of any kind can say the same thing, but I'm grateful, um, you know, for this, this heart, you know, all those things that I, that, you know, I just sort of accepted that I couldn't do anymore while I was, uh, my heart failure was deteriorating. You know, I'm able to do a lot of those things again, you know, that it, it's strange when you think you can't, you, you just kind of accept that you can't do anything again. And then all of a sudden you can after all, um, thanks to the gift of a donor. So I'm just really pleased and grateful for the gift of organ donation. When I, when I speak with anybody who is a donor or, or has had a donor in their family, I just, I always thank them. Um, you know, even while I was waiting, I was like, well, you know, that, that person saved somebody else and that, you know, got me one step closer to getting the gift that I needed. So it really, um, really was just a great experience uh, to go through and to be, you know, come out on the other side seven years later, um, you know, living my best life and, and trying to do everything I can to honor the gift that I was given uh, by my donor, uh, Robert. Uh, I always, uh, always tag my social media posts, uh, anything that I couldn't do before, uh, that I can do again. I always post, you know, you know, hey, we're, you know, I just did this 5k. I just, you know, I just, um, you know, hiked up this mountain, you know, the, any of these things I, I ended with hashtag thanks, Bob, because without that gift, it wouldn't be possible. 